Well hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube art tutorial channel. Well I think I've got my next subject, this lovely pond here on Gallywood Common. So I'm going to go back to the studio and uh, see what I can do with it um, using watercolour. This week I'm on Gallywood Common and I'm painting trees and their reflections. Well, I've just got back from a lovely walk around Gallywood Common, just about 10 minutes from my studio, and um, I found this lovely. Well, it's a pond now, it's not during the summer, but it's a pond at this time of year, particularly with the amount of rain we've had here in uh, in Essex. So what I'd like to do is to show you how to paint the reflections. I've painted this before, but I just really like the look of this one again. I want to treat it slightly different. Well, to start with, I'm going to quickly draw in the um, the basic drawing, really. And what I can see is pretty much a, um, a pond area comes around like that. And we've got two large trees here. And of course we've got some, some lovely foreground. I like that because it gives you an entrance to the picture. Um, we do have a um, little bit of area where the trees actually sit. Because as I say, um, it's a flooded area, but um, this time of year, uh, you can still see some earth where the trees sit so that's interesting and uh, then we've got two large trees we've got one that heads out of the picture like that and that can lay up there like that nice large trunk and then we've got another one that sits beside it I don't think it's the same tree but anyway either way we'll put the other one there like that we will be put painting in uh, brown branches and bits and pieces later on and then we have some hedging before we get the distance and it sort of like sinks a bit there and then comes up again which is ideal for the composition and I think that it's not a river but it looks a bit riven riven uh, rivenified if that's the word not sure that's the word but anyway that's the basic drawing onto the watercolour paper Okay, well I've damped the uh, all of the um, uh, colours are, um, just bring the camera around just a touch more so you can see all of the colours. I want to include the mixers as well this time. Um, and I've damped them all up um, because it was um, last demonstration, a couple of nights ago I think, that um, I actually uh, used them last. And um, okay, well the first thing, I'm going to lay in, I've thoroughly damped the large mop brush going to use the Windsor blue nice blue that could use um, Prussian not too dark so I'm, I'm you notice I'm wetting the paper with the color so I'm not really um, using um, uh, not damping the paper first then I'm going to go in with a little alizarin Just like that. I like the idea of that alizarin. Um, and that will just spread into that. That's nice. Oh, and now we've got the two together. Um, we've got sort of cloud effects there, which is um, more or less what I saw. So that was a bit of luck, wasn't it? You know, take the luck when you get it. That's what I say. And then this side, I'm going to put in some lemon yellow just pull that across it may look a little green but i'm not too concerned about that because i'm going to put in a touch of red oh look at that look see that starburst isn't that fantastic 
Now I can blend that away. And then I can come right the way down with that. Just pull that away. While it's still damp, uh, you know, you, you, you have a problem. That's when it dries, when you've got a problem. There we go. And that is the first wash for the sky. Now I'm going to add um, a little bit of distance. Now I've taken a bit of moisture off the brush. You can see the brush doesn't point. Well, it points, but it's um, uh, sort of semi-dry. Take a bit more off, I think, on kitchen towel paper. There we go. Now for the distance, I'm going to use ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue. These are all professional um, uh, uh, colours by Windsor and Newton. And I'm going to use the cadmium red. And I want a strong mix for this because I'm going into the dry paper, the wet paper. So I need to have, um, there we are, look at that. Now that is going to grow into a conifer, hopefully, or something to that effect. There we are, it's a bit of tree work there in the distance. Um, and I'm going to splash a little bit there. There we go, look at that. See the way that's running up and look just like distant trees. And now I'm going to create a soft distance feel in the background there. A little bit higher perhaps, just pulling across the paper, just to blend that a little bit. There we are. You know, I mean, it really is um, a quite a... Right, now I'm lifting off colour with this brush, just still lightly damped. So I'm lifting off a lot of the moisture. Not, I'm not soaking too much away because I want to blend. There we go. And this is the more or less the foreground um, area. So I'm using cadmium yellow with um, ultramarine blue, but a lot of cadmium in there to start because I want a little bit of life to this these greens and they're going into that got a little bit of blue in there so it won't um, be um, a, a little bit of fresh nice fresh color there I can see just a nice bit of fresh color there so it's, it's just see well I just picked up the color from the palette just putting another little area there and that'll all blend in Look at that, love working wet into wet like this. Um, you never know quite what you're gonna get, um, but at the end, uh, hopefully, things will work out uh, quite well. Right, now a little alizarin crimson, right? And I'm gonna put that in there and in there, and then a little there, and just let that grow up into that color. We go so as we've still got those little splashes of yellow now I'm going to start it using burnt sienna now nice burnt sienna color because it is winter although there is a bit of greenery there as you can see adding a bit of cadmium sorry a bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of the other colors that I've got there and this is the area it's more or less, um, well, it's behind that large trunk there. And, of course, it may stand up a little too, um, like that. There we are. And this can now be dropped in into places here and there, just to give that effect. I want this distance to be mainly blurred. There you go, look. That's it. And then on the outside edge, um, a bit more blue in that now. Just to, what's coming in? Oh, right, yeah, there's something quite tall there. And I'm going to drop that in like that. Because that is a shrub area that's... Um, Bit of brown in there too. There we are, and could be another little area there. 
And remember these little areas can sit on top of those light areas as well. And that will highlight that nicely. And that's what I'm going to do there. See where I've got a lovely sparkle. And I've seen that. Don't put too much behind these large trees. Now I'm going in dark now. So I'm using Windsor Blue and Olizan Crimson. And that will give me a very dark sort of coloration um, that I like because that's the way I saw it on the on the day well earlier today basically and I'm going to leave a little bit here and there along the edges a little bit into that not too much behind there I don't want to get too complicated behind there and one or two little touches there But I'm just going to try, if I can, to leave the bank a nice bit of warmth there. And I think for a backdrop, that's all we need to do. Next, I'm going to use Lemon Yellow, that's that one there, with the Windsor Blue. Quite a bit of Lemon Yellow. Because I want, I, I can really see a good... A real lemony yellow here and let's just put in a bit more yellow into that there we go and this is an area that does it go behind there I think it probably does in places yeah there you go and that stretches out and it's more like an eye a little bit of a area where the trees will sit on the rest is in reflection um, oh, it actually goes more or less right to the back there. There we go. Any to the right? No. And then we have more yellow. And a bit of burnt sienna. In actual fact, a bit of olives and crimson. That would be nice. Because we've got that light area there. Which is behind those large trees so that's also worth putting in at this stage lots of bits and bobs going on there but we'll put those in after we we'll put the water reflection in I think um, but that uh, that more or less does it and do you know I'm going to bring that round behind those trees because I just think it, it marries up quite nicely you know trees will go in there that's lovely right Took off some moisture from the brush. I'm just lifting away one two of these puddles. I want it to dry a bit quick. So as I can work on it fairly quickly. And um, right. Then I'm going into burnt sienna. Because I could see these real rich siennas. A little bit of red tucked in there, here and there. There we go. And then take, oops, take some moisture off of the brush. And... Just spread those down like that. So we've got greens and reds. Always a good combination. Always seems to work. Some of the masters were actually masters at this. Putting in the reds and the greens together. There's no reason why. A little bit of something here too. Oh, that would be nice. Not quite as bold, but it's nice to have a little bit of that red in that. Green helps show the green up, really. Good. We're all coming along quite well. Now, while that's drying, I've lightly damped my smaller mop brush. And I'm going to lift off colour. Just a little. Not really worrying too much. I'm not... don't want to get back to the white paper. But will help the, um, the end result of these two. Just before it completely dries, there we go. Look at that. And because it's wood pulp paper, which is, um, I know a lot of a lot of artists, you know, tend to poo-poo the wood pulp. They prefer the um, rag papers, which is, um, you know, to their credit. That's, um, but I just love to use it. I don't know why it, um, you know, it gives me another option to lift off, which some of the um, the other papers don't. Now I've mixed winter blue and olives and crimson, a little burnt sienna, not too much, 
and it's quite a strong mix I want it to be quite strong but not too strong for these background trees now I've got one maybe still a little wet but I'm rather taking a chance that it's not so one there oh it's growing nicely into that background wash I don't mind that I'm putting another one there too we'll finish them off later um, and what have we got here yeah lots of smaller ones that, that are just dropping in one up there and I like the blurred I'm getting in the lower part and there's another one there can improve on all of those shortly making that one a little wider just nice to have the big one or two larger ones one another one coming off of that trunk there and oh another one coming off there there we are um, I'm going to put some more connect all of those up shortly that's nice and there is just a there is oh there's quite a large one there don't want to go over that conifer so I'm just bending that through and sending him, him off up there like that there you go that's nice yeah yeah nice bit of depth there and there's another one sort of breaks out here like that another one breaks out there don't want too much behind that that dark tree okay that's good now I'm going to pick up the rigger and use that colour again, diving straight in to that lovely colour. I mixed a lot of that colour because I will need that uh, because that, um, you know, it uh, will be required quite a lot. And I'm putting in the smaller branches now. Um, and that one's going to break away there. And that one is heading out to there. That one's heading out to there. You know, it's um, let's put these in wherever really we feel they would go. And um, a little branch coming out there, one coming out there. And I'm just going to flick a few in. Just have a bit of fun with these branches. Put a branch over there and that can head off up there and it just splits a bit there which is always a good thing and don't have them all the same size make certain that some of them are a little smaller than others and we make that one just a little bigger because it went big at the top so that had to be bigger in the lower area there we go and that needed improving on take that out of there and that tucks up there like that there we are look and that is the way I would produce most of my trees there we are a little bit darker there brilliant and the way it's grown looks as if there's perhaps ivy running up there well, that's what I would say anyway. There we are. Superb. Right, a bit more of that colour for the this area here that tends to split a little bit there. Yeah, there's a bit more of that colour. That's better. And that's going to run out of picture. And then we're going to have quite a wide area there. And then it breaks away not that much leafing in the lower area of this tree um, but oh there may be from there that's it and that goes behind that one there you go perfect um, yep a bit wider there I want to overload this distance area needs to be there you go perfect and just one or two from there we don't want to, as I say get too complicated in between those two areas we may have to improve on that later on and while we have this color I'm going to put 
some little touches in along this bank there and little flicks and just to give an impression it's a bit of undergrowth there that's a bit darker which there was that's it within that wooded area little saplings just coming up some of them in front of the, those trees like that there you go and just use the finger just to mold them in in places particularly in the center area there don't think i'll do too much there i think i'll leave that and that's the distant trees now i've mixed Windsor Blue um, with Olizum Crimson and Burnt Sienna. A bit more blue in there just to make, because I want a very, very dark colour. Because these are the darkest trees that we have in. And I've got, they're not that thick, but I've got to watch it. I need a bit of area there. So we're going in like that. And this is a very dark feel to these trees. Oh, and there's another one that sort of comes from that and just winds up there. We'll use the rigger shortly. There we go. Could be a little wider than that, perhaps. Just make, just give them a little bit more meat in the lower area anyway. That's it. Then, the base, since the rigger is damp, I'm going to just spread that colour just to allow them to sit into that yellow and not on the yellow. Now we have another one here that's also um, only thin but I'm going to shoot that up there like that and up through there. That's it. A little bit more moisture. Look at that. And make that just a little larger. It was quite a meaty um, area of lovely tree that stands there. Love these old trees. We'll put some branches on those. And a little bit more because we we'll think we've got another one that sort of sits there and runs up there and goes more or less out of picture which has got some branches on there we go and that's going to work well and there again i'm going to soften that with a damp brush and i'm using that rigger to create perhaps some grasses underneath you won't see too many there but here we are and that's those trees, but we now need to put in the smaller branches from those. We need some more thick colour. So I'm going to use those three colours again. That's it. Right, to start with, we're going to have... Mm, there are some branches coming off, so let's take that one up there. Like that. Notice how it's barely enough paint on the brush. So it's beginning to um, break op open like that. There you are. See, there was a sort of, you know, you can't quite tell whether it's the background or the foreground tree that's creating that. Lovely. You can't beat painting trees in this way. Look at that look. That goes out, it flips back, and then it goes forward again. Lovely old branches. And then we're going to take a branch off of there. And this one needs to be quite quite thick. Let's just widen that just a touch. Um, there we are. And that's quite a thick branch. Well, it is now, anyway. <laughs> and that then runs out of picture. But, of course, that's all out of picture. But this will run into picture there like that 
And here we are. And that is the main tree work within that area. Now I've added a lot of burnt sienna and olives and crimson to that colour there. Right. And uh, this one will have the darker colour on. All will be revealed once we've painted that through. Like that. There we go. And at the moment I'm considering just using the point of the brush to create spiky grasses and then of course some of the grasses stand up like that there we are. and the other one will have a bit more blue in it so I'm putting that in the blue mix that I mixed earlier and I'm pulling that up like that and up like that shall I leave a bead of white just see what that does in between there just look, try not to pull them together at this stage and then some spiky grasses right now this is where I'm going to clean that brush now take a lot of the moisture off and I'm just allowing light to cut to pass between those two and I'm sucking away a bit of color there removing the moisture don't want to get back to white paper which I certainly won't do anyway and a little touch there too because I'm trying to give an impression there's a bit of light coming through and in actual fact it could be down at a lot of that side here we are so that was the idea of putting that very dark in the in the in the first instance, cleaning the brush, mopping off a lot of the moisture, so the brush actually wants to draw up paint instead of laying paint on. And if you can do this while it's still damp, you have a good chance of producing um, the right effect. Just going to blend that just in the base there. There we go. Right, now while that's drying, I'm going to take the rigger, which is um, dig into that colour. And now I'm going to take, now I'm going to use that. Um, I'm going to bring off a branch. That runs up there within that colour there. A little darker now and whoops not too much and just another one there. Notice these have got a little bit more colour than see how that's blue these are warmer and that is the key just gonna run gonna widen that just a touch there. There you go. Just felt that needed a bit of width. Good. And I'm not putting anything on that because I don't think there'd be too much uh, to be seen there. Good. Now I've used, I've, da I've, vert I've not dried the brush, but I've taken a lot of the moisture off. And I've used burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. And I'm just trying to open, I want some texture. And I'm putting that in the foreground to start. Around the base of the tree. And in this bottom right hand corner. And just a touch there. Always nice to have a little bit of something there. Because I can see these sort of warm areas. Shadow would come in later, and I'm going to do the same here. But I just feel that that 
lends itself to that sort of area there then as I go away introducing a little bit of the darker color into that just to take away the um, the real warmth of that because it wouldn't be quite as warm as it runs away into the distance like that and this is on the against the what will be the water like that look at the way that I love watercolor painting it really is um, amazing to watch the way the colors uh, run into each other and and blend and I'm just putting some little touches of that brown color along the edge here wouldn't say it over the back um, but you would along this edge just where the water finishes and the green begins always a good thing to do oh and of course there running away into the distance there touches and just need a blurred effect so I'm pulling it up with my finger that's it don't know whether I want anything now I think I'll be satisfied with that good water reflection time now I'm mixing raw sienna with Windsor blue fairly strong mix this and I'm just running along that edge there like that it looks quite dark and it is quite dark actually probably too dark which is you know could be a problem but of course when it's not a problem is when you wet it and let it run into and all of a sudden it looks just like hopefully a nice sort of dark I want a bit of light there so I notice I'm leaving just a little bit of light area just let me just rub that away with my finger I don't want to right that's good and then of course we can then drag that down to indicate that tree and the bushes there they're a little bit lighter there and so long as you paint across you can get that feeling of have a watery sort of overhang I'm just damping that again just so it runs into that don't want um, any real um, ripples because there's no ripples on this and to indicate that um, that tree I'm going to just drop that in while it's still a bit damp there you go so that's that tree reflected which is good now I've got these trees oh there's just a bit of bank there that will be reflected not a great deal because it's not very tall not very high so it's just a little bit of that and that will be blend that out and um, a little bit of damp um, brush just run across there again and there we are amazing what you can do with watercolor isn't it right now here we go these are the branches that are running up there like that and just make them more jagged like that uh, oh now obviously we're going to have um, a little bit of tree work like that some little tree areas like that I'll blur those out in a sec there we are that's good that seems to be working and then of course we just soften those yeah like that that's more or less it now we go in very dark because these are for these dark trees here that sit just nicely like there just show a little bit of rippling on the water like that just a little feeling of rippling 
not too much there we are going to be a little bit darker along there let that grow up or grow down actually into that damp paint see the way it's growing down into that damp paint along that edge there we are mm. I'm just going to use the rigger now just to pull pull some of that color up the bank in actual fact I'll sort that out in a minute it's um it's looking good. Yep. Just clean this mop brush again. Because I just want that to blend out a little there. That's it. Just want that to blend away in that centre area. Just like that. There we are. So we're not got hard edges. Let that blend away. That's good. some of the moisture and just drag down there we are look at that see the way you get lovely blurred edges and that's what I'm looking for there we are Perfect. Now I think that just needs darkening and so does that. Like that. But other than that, the rest needs to be more or less left to do its own thing. I think. Perfect. Now while we've got this colour, I'm popping that across there like that, like that and like that. Okay. And now, just dropping a little bit in around the back. Don't want to do too much to this, because that would be a bit of a disaster. Um, oh, just a bit darker than that. Uh, just a little bit in there, tree work there, tree work sliding out there, another one coming it's up there and up there, may even just build that in dark, just a, a lot of wooded areas behind there, so that will dry up lighter, here we are, that's alright, yeah I'm happy with that. That works quite well. Yep. Along the edge. And a little bit of this now just so we can see the jagged edge. But it's a little bit too clean. I don't like those clean edges. That uh, you just don't get those on a bank. Two glints of light. Only two little touches there. Not too much because we're going away into the distance. And that is just the shadows remaining. Now the shadow colour is, I've just added um, Elysian Crimson and Windsor Blue into that puddle of paint that I had there. And I think that just gives you that nice grey colour, which really what I'm looking for. And, you know, um, obviously we would have shadow from the tree like that so that would pretty much be dark there okay like that and we're going to have some dark stuff flipping up there not going too dark at this stage just looking to see what might be required and what won't mm -hmm. and we're going to have a little bit of shadow there, like that. Okay, right, a bit more blue going in, a bit more red, just to really 
give that a punch around the base of the tree into little touches there allow that to dry along that edge and of course using the point of the brush you can give all sorts of little dinks and dots that could indicate some um, dark grasses and let that blend up in to the water if you wish because that's not a bad thing to do I've just noticed that it seems to be working quite well so there you go if something works then do it that's what I say and there we are perfect now this colour is also going to be used slightly watered down for an area there I'm sweeping right the way through that right because but that's in shadow don't be afraid to put in shadows really need to show shadow work particularly on an atmospheric picture like this you know um, don't want it everywhere but in those sort of areas there I think it's vital brilliant now we have that oh and this would also be have shadow and that would have shadow that tree is still damp so we'll watch we don't get bleed through to that I'm trying to get it done a little bit quick could have left it really but there you go and then this then runs across there like that and I'm running that right the way virtually to the water's edge there and then I'm painting back in showing some sort of lighter grasses standing up there I'm going to get rid of that perfect do little touches here like that I think we can more or less call that finished A little bit higher there. I want that to send the eye down to that distance area, which I think it does. And now we need to allow that to completely dry. While that's drying, I'm just going to go in one tone darker. Well, quite quite a bit darker actually, into the these foreground trees I'm going to sweep a dark touch in there paint right the way over that area I lifted away because I want this to be fairly dark there you go that's better that gives it that real punch now I can blend that down into that damp area and still get that effect of grasses there we are Yep, it's just bleeding out into that background, but that's fine. And this one is going to be just a little, not quite so dark, but I'm still shooting up with that. Shooting up with that. That's better. Give it that punch. And allow those to blend together. Well, I'm happy with that. That's made a bit more of those two trees. And um, yeah, what about some really dark branches coming off? I'll tell you what, there, there is one. And this is dark. 
that's coming off there, which I haven't seen. No, it's not. It's coming from the top here. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that on there like that and pull that away. Okay, so that's a fairly meaty branch. A couple of little branches shooting away from it up the top. There you go. Then I'm going to pull lots of little spiky branches away there like that. And one or two there. Because I want to really sort of create the illusion. And it is an illusion of a tree hanging, coming over like that from actually outside picture. There we are. Let's continue that there, shall we? Yep, that's good. Lots of spiky areas there. And um, what else have we got for this one? Mm, yeah, we do have a couple of little sort of areas that not major branches, but smaller branches like that. Don't want to put too many in, but one or two that just indicate the feeling of a tree. That's all we're looking for, the impression of a tree. Good. Now we will now allow that to completely dry before we take the surround away. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint that trees and their reflection in watercolour. If you have, please subscribe and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching.